Thank you, thank you, thank you. Cool. So, uh, welcome to my talk. Um, it's titled, I shortened it a little because I know I had a super long title. So, VQA, a new window, in window into uh, pixel pushing. So, who is that face? That face is me. Uh, my name is Walter Jumianczyk. I'm a senior software engineer uh, at the New York Times, and that's my Twitter handle if you want to spam me on Twitter. Um, so I've worked on many different projects at the New York Times, but uh, most of them have to deal with UI. Um, so straight to the point, what is VQA? Uh, visual Quality Assurance. So as uh, you're writing standard code, uh, you know, you have, if you're lucky, uh, you know, you have a QA department, you have some QA engineers um, to help you uh, test that code. You know, you'll have unit tests and you'll have integration tests, um, but they're kind of like the last line of defense. Um, so VQA kind of needs that sort of uh, uh, framework as well. Um, so QA will usually use like Appium or Espresso and they'll write their own tests. I know Ali, shout out to you, you're awesome. Uh, he's our uh, senior QA engineer. Um, uh, he does that for us, um, but our product designers and creative directors also need some sort of tooling to help them with that. Um, so um, VQA isn't only just pixel pushing, and it can't be. Um, you have more than just a pixel on the screen, right? Um, it's, it has to do a lot with uh, maintaining brand identity. So what is brand identity? It can't just be an eight point, um, design system, right, a grid system, or 16-dip margins, or, you know, a toolbar, a collapsing toolbar, uh, you know, a view pager, what have you. Um, it's more of expressing your brand through the UI. So at the New York Times, we have a really strong brand identity. Every single day, we ship a paper, and the top of that paper has the New York Times logo at the top. So it's an international paper, uh, and everybody knows this logo, or they know the super T, which is just the, the T, if you ever see that, like on my sweatshirt. Um, so, um, so in order to translate the newspaper into something digital, we have a bunch of documentation that the product designers use. Um, so this is uh, an example of Franklin. It's one of our typefaces, um, and there are different whole set of styles, um, and it kind of gives you a description of when you can and can't you know, use this typeface, what it should be used for. But this style guide, it's only uh, page nine, uh, and there are a whole bunch of more pages defining when you should use the entire nameplate as opposed to the super T, how you should treat these icons or these, these nameplates. Um, what you can and can't do with them. Um, what you can and can't do with different uh, typefaces like Karnak. Um, what colors you can use and what are the, the colors for different products. So um, the design department has that and that's great, but eventually you're gonna have to you know, hand this stuff off. Or you need a tool or a set of tools to, to implement this sort of stuff. So, so how do we implement brand identity? Um, and that's usually, uh-oh, I'm about to lose power. That's not good. Um, one second. One second, please hold. Excuse me, excuse me. I need a charger. Charger. Laptop. No? Yeah. That's okay. I brought my own. Yay. So, where were we? Yes, design tools, sorry for that. Um, so we have uh, Photoshop, right? And that's our standard design tool that everybody's used. Um, but that's really mostly for raster content, right? So Photoshop has 
a whole assortment of different uh, tooling that you can use to you know, filter you know, photos and crop them and so on and so forth. Uh, so when I initially started development, I was a design technologist. And uh, that was like six years ago, more than that. And the, the type of designs that I would have to implement, which was what that role was, uh, was in PSDs. And I'd get raw PSD files from clients, um, and I'd have to implement them. And that's great, but not so great. Um, now, there's a newer, newer tool, and that newer tool is called Sketch. And Sketch is more geared towards digital um, designs, uh, digital interfaces. So um, it still shares some of the same problems as Photoshop, but I will get into that. Um, then lastly, you have Figma. And Figma is an awesome tool that you should definitely use, and I suggest you, um, you check it out. So the problem with Photoshop and Sketch is that um, they rely on Zeppelin. So if you haven't used Zeppelin, you should check it out. And that's basically controlling your, your history, your revision history, like in Git. Um, and it's important to have that, um, because if you don't, then you'll be chasing around source files. Uh, and that is terrible, and you should not do that. Um, so if you are using Photoshop or Sketch, check out Zeppelin. But if you can use Figma, I think Figma is also a bit more kind um, to your wallet um, in terms of like you can have, I think, like unlimited projects. And Figma is just one single design file. And the, way, the reason why that's awesome is because it's the same file uh, a designer uses to mock up the content is the same file that uh, the developer is using. So it's essentially like a Google Docs of design, because you can also comment in there. There's revision history that you can go through. And then it's the standard tool set that um, I'm pretty sure Sketch has, right? Um, so single source of truth is super important. Um, just because if I don't have a single source of truth, you know, eventually that's going to bring up some really terrible problems. Um, so even if I am using the latest and greatest in, in design technology, it doesn't really solve all of our problems. Because you still have dependencies. And this isn't more towards like software dependency. It's like I am still dependent, as a developer, I am still dependent on design to produce this content. And if the content's not right, they're responsible for giving me that content, right? Um, so it ends up being this kind of one-way conversation where there's usually a handoff. If you're in consulting, they'll probably have an iOS app, and they'll want to convert it to Android. And, uh, and you know they already have their designs already implemented, and it's going to be super similar. But the conversation really ends there. You, you get that content, and, uh, and that's kind of the end of the story. It's up to you to, um, to implement that or translate that uh, itch into whichever way you want. Um, kind of coming away from consulting, you kind of still see that, um, which, you know, like, so what? Well, you'll implement a design, right? You'll get the sketch or Figma or Photoshop file, and, um, and then you implement it, right? And it depends on your implementation. If you, you, you know, if you don't make your UI flexible and you do like some nested frame layouts and a linear layout and a uh, relative layout and you know do all that stuff, um, you may end up, you know, having to rewrite all of that, and that sucks. Um, also, if you get a design that. Um, if you get a design that has like a collapsing toolbar, but you don't really see it, um, that design is one snapshot in the interaction, right? You don't get this full-fledged multi-frame video, or I mean, you may if you're lucky, but um, you, you don't really see that, right? Um, so you'll get feedback when you implement a design, you sit down with the designer, and you'll get feedback saying, like, this seems off. Well, what is off? Like, put a number, you know, to off. Uh, tell me that. Like, we should make this bigger, you know, define bigger. Um, and then the dreaded, is this version the latest? Which, 
If you're using Figma, okay, you know, you'll get that, the latest content there. If you're using Zeppelin, fine. Um, but if you're not, then it's really trying to hunt down these divine design files, right? So maybe it's in your Gmail or Dropbox or Google Drive. Um, I don't know, maybe someone airdropped it to you and it's on like a USB thumbstick. I don't know if people still use thumbsticks, but um, you end up crying a lot. So don't cry, that's not good. Um, so VQA is tedious. Um, just because it's not a fluent conversation, or it, it really should be a more fluent conversation, but the designer isn't fiddling around with Android Studio, um, and I don't think a developer, although I do, I'm guilty of this, I don't think a developer should be fiddling around with the design tools, and until there's this convergence of tooling, um, you know, that's gonna be, that's always gonna be there. So it's also not easy for the, the uh, examples I brought up uh, before. It depends on your implementation. If you don't, you know, if you're not as flexible as possible with your implementation, that may bite you in the end. So here's a great example. I have this source file, and this is in Sketch. Great. It's just got my title, a toolbar, and I got hello world, globe, and earth. So hello world within this, uh, the white content frame, um, that's centered. And then globe is dependent on that. It's to the bottom of that without any margin. And then earth, same thing, to globe, right? And then if I implement in this in, in Figma, same story, everything aligns. I was surprised to see that, cool. But now, I implement it, right? Um, and what I see is that my content is not aligned perfectly um, with the expected result, right? So hello world, it's a smidge off, but then you get to globe and then you get to earth, right? So let's say I have my toolbar and the designer says, I want my toolbar, toolbar to be 48 dips instead of the standard 56 that uh, App Compat provides you. Um, then what do you do? Then you, you, know, you may get into the process where you build out this entire UI, uh, you build out your recycler view with your adapter and your list items, um, and those list items are using like a constraint layout, which is great, uh, but everything is eventually gonna be off because the, uh, the bounds of the text labels in Figma or in Sketch um, are not gonna be equal to the view bounds of uh, the Android implementation. So, you really end up having to rinse and repeat. What this means is like, you take the expected product, that was a screenshot before, right? You take that and then you bring it into the design tool. And then you have to manually drag uh, guidelines onto the screen to make sure that your baselines uh, within a horizontal, that was only horizontal, but also in the vertical orientation, like those things have to align. Um, so how can we improve uh, Productivity, that's a big uh, time sink. Um, I can't spend half a day uh, you know, pushing rulers from the edge of the screen in Photoshop uh, and comparing and contrasting. Um, so how do I reduce that time, right? And more so, like, how do I make that process more proactive in a sense of, like, I am one person, um, and I work 40-ish hours a week, maybe, uh, maybe a smidge more from, from time to time. Um, but how can I offload um, that work onto somebody else? Um, and that's where uh, this tool that I wrote comes in. Or it tries to help solve that or uh, soften the blow of that process, right? Um, so window is what it's called. Uh, and it's a result of those questions. Um, and it's an attempt to help solve um, um, that, that process. Uh, so what does it do? Well, I'll show you with some magical videos that I have. Basically, you long press on the home button, um, you have a configuration app, and you can put uh, uh, guidelines or um, uh, columns. Um, you can enable or disable um, uh, different uh, 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 like groups, I call them. Um, and then you can compare uh, distances between um, uh, all your views that you kind of take a snapshot of. Um, so Google Assistant works in a very similar way. 
even though they seem like two totally different products. Um, and Google Assistant, you long press on home and it pops up this bottom sheet. And for a split second, you'll see what's on my screen and uh, share a screenshot. Um, so this is important. This is very important. So how does it work? Um, well, there's this thing called a voice interaction service, right? That spools up and that creates a voice interaction session. And this is kind of the, the, main, the main thing, the cream of the crop. Um, it returns a bitmap and a view node. So this bitmap is the screenshot. So from Google Assistant, you can share the screenshot, and that is that. Um, then you have a view node, and a view node is basically, it takes the views in hierarchy, and it converts them, and it, it basically like, it's metadata around the view. It doesn't tell you everything around the view. Um, it doesn't tell you like typeface, um, or there are, there is a text color field, but that's always zero, I think, defaulted. Um, it's just, just positional information, and then it may give you some, some text. Um, but that's really all we need for window also. Um, so this is the only code that you're going to see, which is great. Um, so there's really just three sets of methods in this uh, voice interaction session. Um, there's a way of creating this view, which is that bottom sheet. In my case, it's just a view um, uh, that draws a bunch of lines on the screen, right? Um, and once you inflate that view, you return it, and then set content view is your on view created. Um, so once you do that, then you have your life cycle, which is on show and on hide. So this session could last multiple long presses of the home button. So this is when you do your cleanup if you have some listeners going on. And then finally is the magical methods of on handle assist and on handle screenshot. Um, so on handle assist gives you this thing called an assist structure. Within there is a view node. So you'll see, uh, uh -oh. Nope. You'll see um, root view node right here. Um, and that's basically a representation of one window. So if you have an activity, that's one window. Let's say you also have a dialogue, and that's an, another window. So within here, magical numbers are bad, but I have a magical number of zero, and that's going to be our activity. If you have a dialogue on top of the activity, um, that's going to be the index of one. Uh, so you'd usually, if you have like a notification, um, then you know that's some way that you can handle swapping indices. Um, and then that's our view hierarchy. Um, and then on handle screenshot returns this bitmap, and you don't necessarily need the bitmap, but I do pinch to zoom, so um, that's where the bitmap comes in. So like I mentioned earlier. Um, it's all about the canvas. It's just a bunch of lines, a bunch of rectangles. You saw some flashing stuff. Uh, there's no views involved, it's just the root view. Everything is uh, uh, calling onto the canvas API and drawing rectangles or lines. Uh, so we need this to be API 23. I'd love it if it was 21 or less than 21, but that's not, you know, the hotness, the new hotness anymore. Uh, but there's API limitations on, on uh, what um, methods are accessible. Um, so there is support for Android Q, um, which is in my branch right now that I have to release for Q preview. But uh, the way that you'd set um, Window as the assistant um, app on the system was uh, kind of not a hack, but you know, wasn't the best way. So Android Q brings in a role manager with a role, and a role is basically um, a, one single behavior um, that an app can execute, like an internet browser or a music player. Um, this is not a public role, it's a private role, um, but there is a role for assistant. So um, hopefully that doesn't disappear. <laughs> um, but time will tell. Um, so the last thing is that you don't need a library to integrate. So for something like Flipper, Flipper is um, a product by Facebook. And that, um, that product lets you interact um, 
with your emulator from this separate program. And you can manipulate the view bounds and margins and stuff like that. It's a really great tool. The only thing is that you have to integrate it within your, uh, within your app. Um, with this, this is overlaid on top of an activity. And it could be any activity. Um, so it can be, uh, you know, you can inspect, you know, Facebook's app or, you know, uh, Twitter or the New York Times app if you want. Um, so how do I enable it? Well, you'll see this big red box if it's disabled. Um, you click on that and it opens up um, the assistant voice input screen, um, which will then let you select which one you want. So this, uh-oh. Yeah, that's okay. Um, so once I select window, I'll be ushered back into uh, this screen, and that means that um, that it's active. So it's very important for um, these two settings to be enabled uh, because one gives me the screenshot, and then the second gives me um, the current view hierarchy. So um, I use both of those things to display and then draw rulers on top of. Um, so once you have it enabled, then you can go back into the window app just by pressing back. And then you'll have some basic uh, quality of life uh, um, settings. Um, then you'll have an, the ability to add grids. Uh, and then rulers on top of that. So grids will be, it can just be vertical and horizontal lines uh, to make a grid. Um, you can also do columns that stretch, that have an offset. Um, for rulers, you can have rulers that start from the, the left of the screen or the right or the start and the end from the top and the bottom. They can use dips, inches, uh, pixels, and percentages. So you can have a ruler that's 50% vertical and 50% horizontal. And then lastly, there's these outline, this outline category where this is just, this is just the, the default implementation um, that is currently being used within the app. So in a future update, and I'll get into it, um, I'll add some functionality here to help you customize that. So each of these sections, there's three. You can disable those. There may be a lot of noise going on with all of them enabled at the same time. Uh, so you can go back here and disable it, and the next time you long press on home, um, uh, you won't see that option anymore, or you will, depending on what, what you choose. So let's use Hangouts, because Hangouts is about to die, I think, sometime soon. So let's give it some glory. Um, so if I have my Hangouts app, I long press on the Home button, right? And then I'll get my default, whatever thing I configured. This is the default where you'll have a 16 uh, dip uh, start uh, ruler, a start guide, and a 16-dip end guide, and then uh, your text is uh, this pink, and the images are teal. And anything that can't be detected is gray. So if I do a single tap, I tapped on to um, the hamburger, right? That'll highlight everything else will kind of, you know, be darkened. And then I'll get positional information um, from uh, the left top, right, and bottom. And if it's zero, it doesn't draw. Um, so if I hit back, then I, I, I'm, I'm ushered back into the default. If I hit back again, then it disables uh, the app, and I can use Hangouts however I like. So if we do another interaction, if I single tap on this empty view um, uh, image that they have, right, and I long press on the toolbar, now I'm getting positional information between two elements, right? So if you're using this and you can't quite get into the element, you can double tap as well. Um, and that'll keep digging in into the view hierarchy until you reach the root. So uh, within here, the distance between them is 148 dips. Um, so another option, like I mentioned, is uh, rulers based on uh, uh, percentage. They're relative position based on percentage of, of screen width or screen height, also with columns. Um, so that's the basic gist of the tool. Um, so what does the future include? That's important. Um, so I want to improve rulers, because right now you have to go back and forth. The normal interaction I have with rulers in Figma, like I'm just dragging stuff from the left and top and everything super quick. And I want that same sort of behavior to be within this window app. Um, so 
I want you to be able to drag a ruler from the left side of the screen or the right side of the screen um, or top or bottom. Um, I want to um, uh, show some sort of uh, measurements. Uh, when you zoom in, you'll see dips at the top. Um, I also want to have a persistent notification, so that way then you know it's active with the role manager or the implementation right now. Um, there's no way of telling whether a window is inactive. So if you stop using the tool and then you want like Google Assistant to come back, you have to go back into Google Settings um, and disable it, which I wish I had control, but I don't. So hence the persistent notification. And that also gives me uh, a place where I can put some features that I, I really want um, um, within, uh, uh, within that space. So, um, like I mentioned, custom groups. Um, I want you to be able to put in the ID of a view and select a color and have that thing be the only visible. If you don't care about your text views or image views or a web view, you know, like, you, you should be able to hide those things. Um, improve touch interaction. So this isn't like a standard view hierarchy where you're tapping on something and things propagate. Um, it's all manual, which if you have, if you're like, there was a case where someone was faking a bottom sheet and that view was uh, covering their list view, right? So there's some detection in there, some crazy, I don't want to call it an algorithm, but an algorithm um, that tries to detect whether a view or a view group is, um, is not important. So, if I long press on, say, um, uh, inbox, well, rest in peace, uh, Gmail, um, and, and they're using a recycler view, that will resolve into a view group uh, because it'll only provide me with information from like the system API. So a list view will return a list view, but a recycler view or a constraint layout will return a view group, and that's where that challenge comes into play. But I just need better math, so I'm going to do some better math there. Um, and then finally, some metadata. And that's what uh, I also want the, the notification for. Uh, if you can't get to the view that you want selected, I want the ability for you to see the entire view hier hierarchy list and be able to dig in into whatever you want. So what else? Well, good question. Um, this is Hangouts, but this Hangouts, this does not look what I showed you before, right? It looks a little weird. There's some dotted lines some crazy blue colors. Um, if you fade that stuff out, you see this, right? And this is a representation of that view hierarchy, but without any UI components. And that's because this is an SVG, right? So this is the entire view hierarchy that I have um, that is then written out into the SVG. So you'll see, you saw it for a split second there, there was Hangouts, the Hangouts is the label in the toolbar. You also saw some text in there, which was the empty text. That was the empty text, right? That's how Google Assistant works. It takes a snapshot of all the text fields, right? And then it reads them and sees you know, what's in view. And that's how it knows um, what to search for. Um, so the reason why the SVG is important is like this is using still view nodes. But I love to one day, and if you want to take this idea, please do. I want the ability to create my UI um, as an SVG and send that off to a designer. So it's, it's going to involve so much work. But um, one day in maybe the near future, um, I'll be able to draw you know, uh, corner radiuses and images within this SVG. And this SVG will probably be massive, but that's OK. Um, and then that will solve this, this next question, right? Why does Window exist? Well, it's because this tool is trying to move work back into, um, it's trying to move work back to the designers, right? Or to standard QA, or to uh, really anybody else, or if there's a product quality assurance step uh, in, your, in your process. Like, I have enough work to do um, like, I need to rip out Kotlin and, and write some Java, right? Or, you know, whatever. Um, like, I want to try and offload that work. Um, so 
if that tickles your fancy. Um, you can download Window. Uh, you can search it, search it in the in the Play Store. Um, for just write uh, Window v VQA, um, or you can go to that URL um, and download it. Play with it. Let me know. Uh, my Twitter handle is at the bottom of the slide. Um, so you can spam me if you want feature requests. Let me know. I'll see what I can do. Um, and that's it. Thank you.